All right. Good morning, guys. So in the last class, we discuss about the basic process. What is BA? What is the BA process? What sort of data we get? And what is the Azure? Okay. And we'll discuss now today. Along with that, there is a practical whatever we discuss in the last class the BA process, how the data is moving from application from source to a target. So in today's class, the same picture, whatever I have implemented in diagram, same thing we'll see in the practical without having any coding knowledge, without having prior knowledge. Just you need to know a basic of SQL, a basic of SQL knowledge that to also how to create, insert, delete, update, select this basic required. Not only this tool, any tool if you go in the market regarding your BI. So BI is BI is a the tool which is evergreen for the jobs. That means it is not like today you have a Java.net, then separate editions, separate technologies. So wherever the business start, there is a definitely there is a jobs for data analyst and business intelligence without having data analyst business intelligence. The people doesn't go for any kind of business. So to generate the revenue, to understand the revenue, to take the decisions, business decisions, we require BA developers. So even in small industries to large scale industries we required BI developer. That is what we have lot of opportunities. There are many tools are getting and the same one of the tool cloud tool we are calling here as Azure BI and Azure data engineer. In that we're going to discuss about related data, how to manage data, how to process this data, how to work into this data. This complete we are discussing under Azure BI. So majorly we are focusing on your ETL tool called data factory. So in our course in Azure BI or in data engineer, we are mostly focusing on one of the tool called data factory. This is the most important tool. If you know this tool, you will have lot of opportunities. So I told you your work is not only just sitting and developing the reports. This is not the one time you may have a chance to work here. You have a lot of opportunity to work here. You have a lot of opportunity to work here and here. So it is not like just one time you develop, you automate it, then you will not have. No, definitely every, every day you get challenging. Every day you will get work on development, support, changes you need to do. And this Power BI team, what they do until unless they get some request from the user, then only they'll work on the reports. If it is one time development, they'll not touch that report again and again. So to get the data to deliver to these end users or Power BI team, we required ETL developers. We required ETL tools. So I told you in the last session, there is a old tools like traditional tools like we are using Informatica, SSIS. And these tools are not from last four to five years. These tools are from last 15 to 20 years which processing only structured data. You know where see there is a JSON file you can process that you cannot see directly. You can use the API REST or live streaming files. So that all we can overcome if you want to use these things, we are going for some third party tools, third party extensions. So in third party extensions, we are adding those extensions we are paying to third party. That extension we are adding in some components. So instead of that, there is a tool called Data Factory Tool, ETL tool, in that we can do any kind of format data, any format of data. It may be a structured data, it may be a semi-structured data, or it may be unstructured data. Any format we can implement. You want a process data, files data, you want JSON data, you want any other format data, you can easily process by using your data factory and this is nowhere you already see it is a inbuilt solution 
so you no need to do anything you no need to write any kind of coding you no need to write any kind of coding you just need to have basic knowledge on sql okay by using that we can process easily all right so the same way here in the last class i explained what is this diagram this diagram is about to explain this into this one so in when we discuss about with a client we discuss about high level of picture because these people are background from business background they don't know what is happening at background who what teams are required what components are required how we are extracting what format this team doesn't know anything they just think about business perspective they'll take the business decisions when you provide a proper information we don't prop you don't pro provide a proper information there may be a problem so this even though they are displaying in the reports even though they're displaying in the reports to different visualizations these people also required the help of etl without having data what these people they do if there is no data today's no data then there is no work for today these people they simply wait for your comment until unless you don't provide the data they will not having any kind of reporting so the same picture i discussed in the notepad so here what we are doing it we are as i taken one supermarket example when customer purchases any kind of product right that information we store in one storage account it may be a files it may be a databases it may be a cloud storages and through our exercises or through your data factory we extract that information we load in the database and from there these people will do the reporting the same way we are using here same picture so we are extracting the data by using your data factory by using your pipelines and that data we are loading in your databases or data warehouse or whatever the target is or destination it is and from there the reporting will be done the question here is let's suppose i have a file there is a file i have this data and this data i want to load in my azure sql in azure sql i want to dump this data the question here is why we are loading this data to this azure sql why we are loading the data to here why we are maintaining the data here why can't you analyze directly here let's suppose the user is requested the user is requested he want to know he want to know from this data that addresses wise or location wise how many how many salaries are given and how many employees are there so location wise if it is india region how many salary sum of 50000 employed is how many employees are 10 employees uk how many salaries are given can't we analyze with this one how we can analyze with this one so why why we are loading this data into your databases what is the purpose anyone know here what is the purpose of loading the data in this databases what is the purpose of data we are extracting this data that is okay we are loading this data in the database by using help of etl but what is the purpose why we are loading it here why can't you do analysis here itself why can't you do analysis here only Sorry. The performance issue. Performance issue. Okay. Even though it is performing issues, can I can I able to do it? The format is not suitable to perform any operations like previously you said. Now, how many operations are faced by the under? We need to load it into the format. Then it will be useful. Tulsi Das, you are saying something. You are getting some disturbance noise from your side. 
yeah please what tell one by one so who wants to tell please go ahead see this is data i can analyze i can see here simply if i give non-technical person also he can do easily even that non-technical person also know but only the problem here is i'm able to see one by one by one i have to figure out india india us where is it i have to combine i have to sum of the salaries i'll get one result instead of that if i'm good at excel i'll put it this data in excel i'll give you in, in a fraction of second what you want i'll give it to you so the same data i'll put it in excel and whatever he wants the data i'll simply put a pivot table you want addresses by location by sum of salary i'll give you a sum of salary you want counts of employees i'll give you counts of employee in a fraction of second i have did this analysis country wise their salaries sum of salaries counts employee discount i can share this data with the client what is the problem the same thing if i ask if you don't know excel if you want to do here then you have to go one by one by one but the problem here is if the data is in millions if the data is 1 lakh, 2 lakh, 3 lakhs, you cannot go one by one by one notepad. Even though you put in Excel, Excel also will max to max give you 10 lakhs. If you put 5 lakhs also, complete your data. If you put 5 lakhs and you do a pivot, your complete Excel will get gone. You cannot analyze the big data. You cannot do some analysis on a huge volume of data. On every day, this is not just 5 lakhs records. Every day, every day we get a 5 lakhs. If that person is asked you, today you got this data. Day one you receive this much of data. What about tomorrow's date? How you're going to handle it? So this is very difficult. We cannot analyze everyday transactions. The transactions every day gets 1 lakh. 5 lakhs, 10 lakhs from different, different location every day. Almost 10 to 15 lakhs transactions. Or maybe more than that. Depend upon the project. Depend upon what sort of project you are working it. That level of data you will get. If it is general project, okay, no problem. You will get in lakhs. If it is a huge market, then it is a millions of transactions every day. So that is difficult to handle and difficult to process difficult to analyze that that huge volume of this person will not do anything even the lakhs of billions of transactions they just want high level information high level sum of information they want they want just submit they never see on customer level submit submit and how much counts you receive tell me that day one how much records you receive share me that report they never ask you what sort of things that you have So that is the reason it is very difficult to manage in some accounts. Even though you are using data lake, even though you are using other SQL account, blob storages, Azure storages account, that all we are going to process on every day. We extract these lakhs of millions of record. We process in one centralized data, a centralized database. Database have a capability to write as per your requested format a requested format data you can extract from your database the same data the same data i can still i can do in excel i can put it some color and i can share with this but this is a manual work that is what what they are doing it instead of manual work they are involving the reporting developers they are involving the report developers instead of your writing a query extracting the data putting keeping in the Excel and you are sharing to the end user. Instead of doing every day, the same query they'll take and they'll put in the Power BI. And this query will execute, fire the data. They'll execute on database. In result, you get response. That response, the data will store in visualizations and they'll send to the client automation. So let's see the practically. This is a manual work I did. And let's see how automation I can make for this one through our cloud. 
This is completely on premises. I can explain you non premises, but we are discussing here as a cloud. Let's go with a cloud. So currently, whatever we are discussing, these are the public clouds. There are three types of clouds we have public cloud, private cloud and hybrid clouds. So the public clouds are generally in the market. There is a competitors. Public clouds are, are your Azure, which is from the Microsoft. The same way public clouds are your AWS, which is some Amazon. The public cloud are GCP, which is from Google. And there are some other clouds, third party clouds like IBM, some other third party clouds. Are, but currently in the market, which are having competitor with Azure is Amazon and Google. But why Microsoft products? Because Microsoft product, any Microsoft, not only this one, whether you take SQL Server, whether you take Power BI, whether you take MSBI, whether you take SSI, this Microsoft products is like even not technical person can able to work with these products. It is a user friendly products. Any product you take in Microsoft, from basic to high, they always build as a user friendly products. Even though you don't have that knowledge, you can still work by using GUI, graphical user interface. That is the main thing, main advantage of your Microsoft products. Even though I don't know how to create a table, I can do by using GUI. If I don't know how to build the this one, they, if you don't know how to develop the pipelines, you don't know how to develop the ETL, they have a GUI. Everything they'll make a user friendly with non technical persons. Okay. So these are the public clouds we have. So anyone, anyone can come and anyone can purchase any kind of products that you have in the cloud. So in the cloud, we have any kind of product as a service you can purchase. This is all our public clouds. The same way we have here as private cloud. What private cloud will do? Private cloud are nothing but your on-premises softwares. Whatever on-premises you are doing physically systems. Physically you are installing. Physically I required system. Physically I am storing databases. Physically I am maintaining the databases. SQL servers. These all are physically we are involved. Installations, maintaining. These all are physically and within whoever is there within premises. Whoever the employees, like whoever they're added in the domain. Let's suppose you're working for one of the company called IBM. You are there in the domain. You're going to add in the domain. Only that person can able to access. You want to access from your laptop. You want to access that private in from your laptop. So what you generally you do in your local also, you will find one of the component called VPN virtual private network. So if you want to connect to the, your network, company network through virtual private network, you will be connecting to the VPN through VPN. You will be connecting to the different operations from your local system. When you're going to get this access, when you are there in the domain, when you are company accessible, then that time we use as a private cloud only within the company, within the company's employees can access. But in this case, if you want data factory, go it. If you want database, go ahead. If you want other SQL storage, store it. Anything you can store. The same way, some companies, they use hybrid cloud. Hybrid cloud is nothing but the combination of combination of private and public. What it that means? The means is nothing but I want to use data factory is a familiar tool, very powerful tool data factory. Some sort of services I want to use from cloud. My application is my story, my my system is or my billing application is somewhere in other country application. I told you what is application application, nothing but any kind of system which generate or building whatever it is happening. This is application. It is storing somewhere. What I want to do my application 
from my application, I want to extract the data by using data factory ETL, but but data I want to store in my cloud. Data I want to store in my local cloud. Data I want to store in my local cloud. So like suppose like DRDO data. This is a defense data. We don't want to store in the cloud because at the end of the day, this Microsoft company is also from USA company. So I don't want to store my uh, privacy data in the cloud. Yes, I am going to use some services. I'm going to use ETL to process my data, but I'm not going to store my data in the cloud. The data, whatever is there, I'm going to store in my on premises, wherever I'm having my company there only I'm going to store. But to extract the data from any places, I'm going to use ETL. So this is a combination of hybrid applications. Hybrid applications. So when you go to the cloud, public cloud, any public cloud, they are divided into categorizations. They are divided into different categorizations. Like whenever you go to Amazon, Flipkart, some other shopping mall, what you see there, you'll see the categorizations. If you want food products, if you want shopping, you want clothing, you have electronic gadgets, right? Any Amazon, Flipkart, you go, you'll find that category. The same way in a public cloud also, you will find categorizations. The categorizations are divided into three different modules. One is infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. Very simple categorizations. So by name only you can understand. Infrastructure. Infrastructure means the physically used, the physically maintaining. In a cloud, what may be a physical? Maybe at systems, maybe operating, uh, maybe a, some networks, maybe a physical data cables. These all are physically. System, you are installing it, but you are acting like a virtually. Here you can access through your remote desktop. Through your remote desktop, you can access the system, whatever installing. That installation physically, they're doing somewhere in the data center. You are acting like a cloud, but there's somewhere you are installing that all the things, whatever you're installing in the data center. The physical you're installing in one data center. So these all are nothing but your physically involved infrastructure. The same way platform like your SQL Server, operating system, Windows operating system, these all are comes under the platform as a service. Software as a service, nothing but which is already developed like your Outlook, Gmail, you are not going to develop on top of that, which is already built up, you are using it. So when you go to the portal, so when you go to the portal, you will find all these things, okay? So before going to this portal, let me explain you one more point. This portal, when you want to work with Azure, you don't need required any kind of physical softwares. Completely you are working in portal itself. You just required one internet, you required one system, and you required some login details. Or we log in instead of login, we call here as subscription. Again, subscription divided into three categories. One is free subscription. Other one is pay as you go subscription, which company used, which I am going to use. Another one is student account, student subscription. For free subscription, Microsoft giving you 200 USD dollars amount. See, when you go to any cloud, when you go to the Amazon Flipkart, what you do there? You purchase product, you require amount, okay? The same way here also when you go, you have to purchase the, some products. For that you have to pay amount. You no need to pay from your pocket. Microsoft giving you to elaborate these things. In Indian currency, almost 13 to 14,000 credits in INR they are giving you. So pay as you go is monthly basis billing. You have to pay from your pocket. Student account is almost 100 USD dollars you are going to get for free. But there are some conditions. What is the conditions? I'm going to explain in regular class. Okay. For time being, I'm developing with my account. Now see here. Let's develop this in the cloud. Very simple method I'm going to develop. So this is the data. 
I'll use this data and I'll generate this data in my Power BI. Very simple. End to end, I'm going to handle. I don't require any separate team Power BI, any separate team database. I don't require any separate team storage team. I don't require separate detail. I'm going to handle everything end to end in Azure BI. Okay. Let's see here. What I want to do here, I want to develop this one. So to want to develop this one, and this picture and this picture is similar guys i'm explaining you technical way but this is like high level way people who are from non-technical you can able to see by this seeing picture even business team will see this picture when you go inside the data factory when you go inside the data factory you will have some technologies some terminologies differently see here when you go inside this one When you go inside, what happened, Ramesh? Any issues? Okay, so when you go inside this one, you will find this one. When you see this picture, like this data factory, your pipeline. Now, if you see the pipeline, this is the picture. To develop the pipeline, you required storage account, you required connections, you required file. You require target and this one. This is all you have to develop. One by one, we'll do it. Okay. Don't get hurry. Let's first develop the blob storage. Then I'll develop this one. Then I'll develop data factory. First, I require sources, target. Only two things in you need to remember in your mind is when you're developing with ETL, any ETL, what is my source and what is my target? That is destination. In this situation, what is our source? Our source is Azure Blob Storage. What is your target? SQL Server, Azure SQL Server. That simple it is. If you understand these two points, you start developing it. Okay. Now see your Blob Storage. How to create in cloud? So just log into the Azure.com. You will find it. Try for free. You will many things are there. We'll discuss in tomorrow's class. But right now, let me go directly and develop it. Okay. Just try to understand and I'm going to explain you from scratch. So what they want blob storage. Can I search your blob storage? What is showing? It is in the storage account. Okay, no issues. Continue. Click on create very simple process. So in company level, what we do, we allocate, we think many things we think how much GB you want, how much storage you want here. Very simple. The project name, what is my project name? Let's suppose my project name is Supermarket. Super Market Project. Under this project, I want to develop, under this project, I want to develop, install Blob Storage and SQL Storage and Data Factory. Three things I want to install. So this is my Blob Storage account, okay? Don't worry, all these option, very simple option. I'll explain in detail level, okay? I'm not explaining right away. We'll discuss one by one basic level in regular class. Okay, just create. You no need to worry anything. You no need to think much here. Everything through notification. With success or fail, deployment, everything through notification. Okay, parallelly we go. And I'm going to create one more service called SQL Server. Okay. Let's open the one more tab. SQL database is already there. Okay, no issues. Click on create. This is my subscription and my project is supermarket project. And the database name is Azure. Azure SQL DB. Okay. Database name is Azure SQL DB. The database I want to store this in the server. The server name is Vine Tech SQL Server. New username to connect to that server because it is in cloud. You need to give user ID and password. Make sure the password is same. Done. Click OK. Simple it is. 
what you want you want production server you want development server let's go with development server how much gb of data you want you want 5 gb you want 2 gb you are 100 gb or more than that you want 100 gb change it you want 30 gb 40 gb how much gb this is also not sufficient go high level and this is also not sufficient 500 gb 700 gb whatever you want then go with high level general whatever you have you can see 240 gb no this is also not sufficient go high level so this is have different ways for currently i'm just selecting 1 gb okay 1 gb i'm selecting and later you want to change yes in a fraction of second you can change database name server name development server simple backup also they are taking you no need to worry just review and create one page estimated cost per month not the amount it will charge right away it charge per month okay don't worry it will not charge that level of amount create and that you don't need to pay from your pocket you can use free account see installing one step for sql server to install in your normal in your on premises in your company level or in your local system also if you want to see sql server you have to go through this process you require set of files right you will downloading the sql server version you will have a set of file you will go through this installation process you have to add this new installation machine make sure that your system is updated these all things you are going through it the services you are selecting what sort of addition you have company level they use enterprise you are using evaluation or developer edition you are using it but in your cloud very simple one page in one page i have started creating a sql server just i have to tell my server name database name and user id and password how much gb i want i have allocated you don't need to worry about all this stuff no need to go all these things where it is installing it is installing in one c drive where it is installing there is a east us location okay let's come back to our blob storage blob storage is created it's showing as created and the generally one more thing just point i want to add here is it's showing resource in the cloud in azure whatever you select whether it's a data factory whether it's a data lake whether it's a blob storage anything we call here as resources or services that is what it's showing as go to your resource it is created it is asking to go to the resource we don't call directly blob storage blob resource data lake resource or data lake service like this terminology we use okay so go to the resource that is your blob storage account and this is your account name supermarket project under project you have a your account okay and there is the blob storage file shared storage queues and table storages what you want blob storage so i'm going to take a container this is my data logs in the data logs i'm going to upload one file what sort of file it is where is that file here in the practice data copy i'll paste it here this is the file i want to upload generally if you want to give access to someone what you do in gmail account in drive you'll right clicking and you're giving that person access here also you just need to take a property and to share with someone this one that simple it is okay your data is ready if you want to see right click go to the view and edit and check the data this is the data this is the data first is header and the data okay now let's come back here these two things are done source is ready target is also executed sql server database where it is created under which project it is created under it is refreshing under supermarket project it is created with the name called vinetech sql server there is a azure sql db okay no issues now you can see 
how much GB of data you are selected? One GB. Tomorrow you want to increase. I told you when it is on premises, it is difficult to increase it. Still, it you can increase. There is no problem, but infrastructure may be lag, may be having performance issues. But here, if you want more, you need to increase. Just simply go to the storage and compute. You can increase in fraction of second. In a fraction of second, you want to increase how much GB you want. Select that module, increase it up to 2 GB you want. Just click on apply. And you no need to worry how much you are storing, pay it. If you're not storing, no need to pay. It is a scale in and scale down. Go to the monitor and check 2 GB is increased or not. It is increased. So you need to think how much data it is coming from source. Accordingly, you have to increase the database size. If it is 1 GB, load it 1 GB only. If data is huge, immediately you change it. The same way our data factory also. Two things are ready. Source is ready. Database is ready. Now let's go with the ETL tool. Okay. Let's go with the ETL tool. Source is ready. Target is ready. Now let's with the help of powerful tool called ETL. That is data factory. Very, very powerful tool guys. So that is what people are even AWS, Amazon people are using data factory. So very simple, just click on create. And this I want to add in my project like supermarket project. This is my test ADF. Physically I'm installing in, in this location. You have different locations. Okay, review and create. I'll talk about that later. How to select locations and all in regular classes, okay? Review and create. So this is very, very important tool guys. Please understand. So to achieve this requirement, to load the huge volume of data, I'm using data factory now. See here, it is created. Let's go here, go to the resource, launch the studio. Studio means where you are going to develop. So here, you are going to develop your pipelines. In this place, we'll be working as data factory. Only three modules you need to work. There are only three modules. You don't need to focus any much on other things. You just need to work on three modules. One is, one is the development to develop whatever the pipelines you're developing it that you are need to automate or by using some connections that you are going to develop and whatever you develop, you are just automating that process. That is automating the process. That simple it is. So first is development, then connections, then automating three tabs. This is just learning center. Just some awareness about what is the data factory. Okay. This is my pipeline. Very simple. Create new pipeline. What is a pipeline is about moving the data from blob storage to Azure SQL storage. Right. And I just want to load one of the work I want to take is activity. I want to work one of the activity called copy data activity. There are a lot of other activities are there. We'll discuss later. This copy data name only can understand copy data. From where to copy from source to target. I want to copy my data. What is my source? Can anyone tell me what is our source? And what is our target? Database uh, source means. Source means database, are you sure? No, target is database. Target is database. Source is? The blob storage. Yes, blob storage, the files. 
this is our source from here to here we are moving it we don't need to analyze in the files that is the reason we're going to write the data in the target and then we are analyzing through sql queries so source is our this one this is the source this is the source blob storage is your source and here in the right hand side there's a target with the help of this pipeline we are doing it copy data activity i took but what copy data is requesting it is asking me data set it is asking me to select the file to select the file also we require connections connection established between pipe data factory and the service these are the individual services this individually this individual this individually we don't have any connections between this them so we don't have connection that is what i'm going to create first connections i'll go to the manage tab i'm going to tell that i want to create connection click on new connection to whom you want to give connection see i told you why it is powerful there are a lot of lot of sources you have lot of component inbuilt it is added even you not even work that kind of components are there oracle db2 sap ftp sftp file system github synapse many things are there so this even the sources we are not there in other etl tools like your informatica data stage ssis only you can process structured data but here you have a chance to process your data through structure semi structure and unstructured so this many data already inbuilt connection you no need to manual do also these all are inbuilt connections all right so what is our source our source is blob storage i'll simply search here blob storage i search here as blob storage okay click continue i just need to tell this is my blob storage connection the connection i am calling here linked service what is the subscription subscription is my pay as you go what is the account name blob storage account do you see here blob storage account the account name is blob storage account this is my account name under that there is a container called data logs okay click continue that's it and what is the target this connection is also want to create sql server click on sql server i use sql database okay this is my link service again okay subscription server name vinetech sql server database name azure sql db you remember i have given user id and password to connect to this database the user id is what is the user id how to check user id let's go back so before going to user id i just want to set my ip address why i am setting my ip address i told you here public cloud private cloud hybrid cloud private cloud what we do we go with vpn to connect to this database or anything the same way in public cloud also there is a security you cannot any machine any machine cannot connect directly either you need to have subscription full access or either you have to tell even though you know user id and password i know user id and password but i don't have full authorized access so that is what you are connecting from your machine you have to add your ip address you have to add your ip address so how to add ip address don't worry i'll tell you that how to add an ip address currently i'm adding it in quick way don't worry all this thing i'll tell you in detail level okay i'm just adding my ip address here what is the purpose i'll tell you this one okay there is a security purpose we are going to add now this is my query or you can even you can use here if you don't know ssms you don't know ssms how to use or there is no installed no problem even you can work with query editor this is your user id copy this user id and paste it here user id and password okay so what you do just go here 
user id password given test the connection whether it is properly accessed or not you will get to know if it is created then click on create okay connections are ready accounts created three accounts created connections we created connections also we created copy data i drag and drop i just need to create data set i just need to tell okay see here very simple connections are ready just i have to tell what is my file from the blob storage from the blob storage what is my file what sort of file here it is see here structure semi structure unstructured what sort of file you have structure select the structure click on continue this is my blob source data set and already connection i created just click on connection container name what is container name very simple container name is data logs even you not remember no issues just browse it data log is container inside that there is a file csv file is there click on continue first row is a header yes first row is a header because you see in this file is first row is a header the same way here also we have a first row as a header this one i want to treat like a header and what is separating the column pipeline the pipeline symbol so that is what i have to tell here data set is created and the pipeline is separating not with a semicolon with a pipeline this column is coming that's it you want to see the data just preview the data source data data is ready what is your target table click on new sql server database this is my let's suppose customer db customer db click on customer db do you have table i don't have any table i did not create a table you want to create create it even if you don't know you don't know how to create no issues i can log in here i can log in i can create if i know how to create table if i don't know see one method is you can log in within portal only the another method you can go and you can connect from ssms also you can connect from ssms also see i'm able to connect from my local also because i added my ip address don't worry that i'll tell you so if you want to create 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 table customer table customer data one is uh, customer id customer name customer amount or customer revenue and customer location that's it if you know how to create very simple if you don't know how to create table that also i'll tell you one table is created do you want to see this table is created see i'm accessing both the way here also i'm accessing here also i can work no you want to see here only no problem just select star from and run it no data is there you want to see same thing in my local check here same thing no data now i am going to load by using my etl tool now you can see you will find just refresh one more time refresh you will find one table called customer data if you don't know how to create don't worry i am going to explain you how to create the table very simple automated process click on auto create table there is an option in data factory also mappings is very very important in any etl here i want to add employee id here why i want to add employee name to my customer name here i want to add salary to revenue here i want to add address to this is my source this is my target done very simple source we selected file target we selected table mapping is done now just validate check any issues no issues can i run yes you can execute click on execute button very simple
what we did, we just extracted data. We are by using copy data and we are loading in the target. It is millions of record. If it is a, whatever the counts are there, we are implementing it. We are extracting this data, whatever the storage by using SSIS method or ETL method, data factory method, and we are loading in one database. And then same way database to another database, you have to implement. Okay. Now see first whether it is properly success or not. Just select input, output, and pixelization. So we are loading the data from blob storage to Azure SQL. There is a one file which is having 32 records. It is read. There is a 32 record is written in my target. Is it 32 records or not? Let's go and cross check. You want to see the counts? I can select the counts. This is my data. And you want to see just counts? Check the counts. 32 records. You want to see in my local system also? I'll execute one more time. 32 records. Now I can write a query. What query? Our end result. What we want our end result? This is the data we want. You want this data? Yes, I'll I, instead of Excel, I'll do with my query. What you want? Let's see here. We want customer location wise. What is that? See location, right? Okay, spellings are wrongly spelled here. Okay, this is the location. Okay, location wise, what we want? Sum of this revenue as revenue. Count of the CID, customer ID, as counts of transactions ID. That's it. Simple query. Now, if it is a 32 records, I'll get in fraction of seconds that values. And you can compare copy data and you can compare now, which I did in Excel. The same thing I did in by using my this ETL method. And even you don't want to do this also. This is not looking like table format. This is looking like a table format. I cannot analyze that level. You want to see some other visualizations, then add it. Then this team, what they do? This Power BI team, they'll extract this data from here. Same query, they'll put it here. Instead of running manually, instead of running manually, the same query I'll take. I'll go to the Power BI desktop. I'll develop my report. And I'm going to share with client, with visualizations, with your visualizations. So get the data. Get the data from SQL Server. What is your server name? My server name is my server name is this one. Copy and paste. What is your database name? My database name is Azure SQL DB. Click on connect. If it is ask you password, provide the password. What is the user ID? Click on connect. So our name, database name is given. SQL Server. What is showing the incorrect? Uh, 
yesterday only I installed this one. Let's see whether this. Your SQL Server database. Do you have any Azure SQL? Azure SQL database. Click on Connect. Server name. Target principal name. Okay, just providing user ID and password. So what will happen? It will go and connect to this server, that Azure SQL server, which we created in Azure portal. What we are doing, we are just implemented till this stage. Data is processing every day. We are going to schedule. This is not manual work, okay? This every day we're going to schedule it. What happened? Networking related issues. So no problem. There is a issue with the yesterday only I have created with the full admin permission. It is it is a user permissions given to Power BI. Yesterday only I have added. Can I connect to my local server? Let's check. Okay, it is connecting to my local. Do we have any such data? Okay, this is data can we load. Just I'm showing you, don't worry that uh, there is a security issues with that one, no problem, okay? We'll see that in regular class. So whatever we have did, you'll get on the right hand side. So instead of doing what is my intention to just to explain you instead of doing manual work, take that data in the Power BI and just present the location wise. What we want, we want to display this revenue. And do we have any counts? The counts. This is also uh, same as you are getting same like data table format. Now you can change however you want, which data you want, how you want to change display in the graphical way display graphically you can display so that by seeing you can understand okay blue is something is occupying almost this percentage and you can change these all properties how you want how much percentage it is changed how much value it is just you can hover it will show you that values almost 50 percent is covered the india location the revenue the other locations canada USA. So like this, you can add number of uh, different graphs, number of different charts. You can add, I can say, so it is not that graphically interacting every day. You can use different charts and the same thing. You can add different dashboards. Now, this is the one I want to add one more thing I can add. 
I just want to show amount wise their locations. The growth percentage, how much growth it is. How much growth percentage. So this all are combined in one single dashboard. So how much growth percentage it is revenue wise. So the main intention here to explain you is that so wherever we go there is a ETL is required data fact is required so that is where their work is one time even you can achieve that same work by writing a SQL queries you can achieve the same work by writing a SQL queries and you can share with the Excel but what this they are doing instead of doing manual work they are using the reporting not only I'm talking about the power BI there is a lot of tool in the market I told you in demo first demo also you cannot predict only for Power BI. There are many tools such powerful tools are there. SSRS or Tableau, Cognos, IBM tool. This is at last level. When you have data, then only you can analyze. If you don't have data, how are you going to analyze? Okay. So like this, we are going to discuss. There are a lot of services that we have currently. The different services are like your Azure storage accounts. Under that, we get blob storage, file share. I'm just listing out some basic storages, okay? Queues, table storages. Same way you have Azure SQL accounts. In Azure SQL, again, there are three models. Azure SQL database, Azure SQL manage instance. We just checked only this point, okay? And there's other options. We also have Azure SQL in virtual machine in virtual machine with different operating system with different versions of SQLs. Then we'll see how to create virtual machine. Very, very important. We did not create a virtual machine. I cannot explain in one hour class all the services. Okay. And Azure Data Lake, very, very important. Nowadays they are using only Data Lake, Gen 1 and Gen 2. Data Lake Analytics, Azure data lake analytics then we have ssis etl tool very very important this tool is if you know this tool also there is a lot of lot of opportunities lot of opportunities on ssis tool also you have azure synapse not the analytics synapse is a database okay dedicatedly sql pool what is that uh, synapse Okay, this is database, data warehouse I'm talking about. Then we have your logic apps to automate or schedule your alert mails or schedule some other thing. Okay. And there is a data factory, Azure data factory, very, very important tool. It is we are mostly our course is focusing on data factory key. It is a key of our course. Then you have a data bricks and other stuff. Some migrations also we're going to discuss migrations and other some other topics okay this is just i'm listing out the main highlighted topics inside that there is again subtopics are there inside that there is other things also there okay so like this you have to implement this is another picture how you're going to extract the data structured data and structured data you want to stage them in data lake data lakes to process for transforming then wherever you want you can load it this is another picture the staging so each and different requirements on premises they want to take now data from on premises not from cloud on premises to other external sources they first load in the blob and through blob again they load the data warehouse now just now we have seen blob to sql we have seen this part and also you have to create another part of data factory this part you have to create on premises to the blob. Then analyze whatever you want in the power. This is lastly, that is what people are from Power BI reporting tools. They must require knowledge on ETL. Without that, there is no interviews nowadays for Power BI or reporting team. I'm not only targeting to the Power BI. Any reporting team who doesn't know ETL knowledge, there is no interview at all. Even you put a resume also, you will not get scheduled. When you keep the points as data factory, when you keep the points as ETL, 
your resume will picked out for data analyst. All right. So this is what the picture we have discussed in the last class and this how we have implemented the practically. And tomorrow I'll discuss from basic this whatever we implemented. This is just a basic. And from tomorrow I'll discuss the high level of. Picture so I am going to target not only from technical. I know there are people are from non technical people are from BPO background. So from all whoever know or who don't know I will take from scratch. Okay, we're going to discuss about from basic to high level topics. So slowly we'll go with high level topics. I cannot directly explain what is data factor. What are the components? How to achieve? What are the services? This is all we are going to discuss in our regular class. All right. So there are different categorizations. I told you these are the services. These are the different services we have. Database is different. So these are some listed out. Okay. Analytical analytical different services. Integrations are different services. Migrations. Many things are there. DevOps, databases, containers. This is all we are going to discuss. Okay. I'm going to share that course content. You go through it. I hope everyone shared your details. If anyone missed out, please share. I'm going to send you the last recording and along with that today's recording with all the details. Okay. I have explained in the last session also for minimum data factory. They are giving you minimum 24 to 33 lakhs for eight years of experience minimum. I told I show you the offer letter also in the last class. Okay, so how quickly you going to learn that important is because this tool is more people are not having that level of experience. If you talk about uh, SSIS Informatica, these are the old tools ETL old tools. 15 years, 20 years back tools. If you ask this, if you go for interviews for this one, you need to have proper real time experience. Here also we are learning the case studies. See in my in my activities. Where is that course content? Here also I'm explaining all the real time content. I'm not going to take any definition. See, I have a lot of PPTs. See, we're going to discuss about all these properties, how to load the data. From one store to another, so these all are real time case studies. Okay, these all are real time case studies. The same way, when you go in the old tools, people are already working, people know the situation, people know the case studies, they got this kind of errors, they'll ask you. But in Data Factory, people are not that level of experience, they are asking a basic level of questions. Okay, they are asking basic level of questions. What is data factory? What is integration runtime? How to manage? How to create? How to configure this basic level of questions? Currently, they're asking it in real time. So I'll give you that interview questions. We have a resume preparation. One basic project. I'll explain my existing project, which I'm currently working that project. I'll explain you. Okay, so if you go next to three to four years, this uh, the situation and the interviews level will be tough. Now people from other countries, we are getting a project. So you will not have that level of interviews questions. You can just manage it with this our course 40, 45 days course. All right. Any questions, any doubts guys? 